In this particular video, we'll be talking about economics as an applied science. Now, in the previous video, we talked about economics as a social science because we talk about history, we talk about uh, people involved in the past and what is economics, what are the basic principles and definitions of economics, so on and uh, so forth. We were also talking about a lot of uh, uh, basic explanations of basic terminologies of economics, such as uh, the definitions of economics and the uh, different political landscape upon which um, economics is adapted as a means of a platform to administer a particular country. And so it is uh, a social science. Now, with respect to this uh, video, we'll be talking about economics as an applied science. When we speak of economics as an applied science, it simply means that we gather all of the results of data information through research and development, and then apply these particular empirical studies to the real world or real situation. And the purpose of this uh, application of economics is to improve quality of practice in business, public policy, uh, daily life by thinking rigorously about cost and benefits, incentives, and human behavior. Applied economics can involve the use of uh, case studies and econometrics, or um, these are uh, metrics that are used in the field of economics that is um, uh, visual in nature and uses statistical information in order to compare and uh, m uh, create models out of uh, theories and it is uh, actually are being tested in an actual scenario and by this uh, we'll be able to improve the uh, overall performance of a country and of the whole world for that matter. Now, we begin with the concept of the production possibility frontier, which means that there is an inherent limitation of our capability to produce goods. Now, let us just say, for example, that there are only two commodities in, in the world today, and that is food and clothes. Those are basic needs. Um, although one can live without clothes, but in some regions in the world, you cannot live without clothes because it's too harsh and the condition might actually kill you. Uh, say, for example, you are in the North Pole or in the South Pole. So clothes is an absolutely necessary element for human survival, including food also. No one can live without food. But there is an inherent limitation into these particular resources because we cannot um, suffice the need of the world because according to Thomas Malthus in the previous video, the growth of population always outweighs the production of food and hence there is an inherent uh, problem of food shortage which means that uh, people, uh, some people live with uh, limited food in their mouth and some don't have food in their mouth they can't uh, eat even once a day and that results to extreme poverty in some countries and region around the world now when we are talking about uh, production possibilities frontier it simply means that our resources are limited and so if we are to produce 100 of food we can no longer produce clothes and so we have to adjust a balance between food and clothes imagine that there are only two commodities but of course there are a lot of commodities in the world in the philippines like we have internet connection we have electricity transportation right and a lot more like gadgets electronic gadgets so on and so forth but considering that uh, so that we will be able to understand perfectly how production possibility frontiers work is that 
we will just use food and clothes. Now, if we produce 75 food, we can produce 100 clothes, right? And so, we reduce 25 out of food. And we can already produce uh, 100 clothes. And so, which is better to produce 100 food and sacrifice having clothes or uh, limit the number of food and then produce some clothes or you produce 50 clothes and then i mean you produce 50 foods and then you produce 150 clothes it depends on the situation because uh, when we speak of clothes there are some part of the world as i've already told you that demands high quality of clothes and there are some portions in the world that demands high quality of food and limited clothes is okay and fine just like in the philippines we don't have to have a lot of clothes you if you have a limited one that is fine already as uh, as for me i have a very limited clothes probably around 10 clothes 10 pairs with shoes so on and so forth you don't have to have a uh, hundred or uh, two hundred clothes because that is outrightly unnecessary and so the idea behind this is that there is an inherent limitation and you have to prioritize things because you cannot just uh, use all of your resources on one particular thing you need also other things and so you have to sp split your resources into these particular things and so there are inherent limitation of what we can produce in this world and so that's the reason why it is very significant for us to increase what they call as the gross domestic product why because gross domestic product or gdp actually represents our capability to produce goods and services domestically or within the bounds of our country now in the graph that is displayed in your screen represented in a green arrows this solid line is the previous gross domestic product the broken red lines is actually a representation of the growth of the gross domestic product which means that when there is an increase it expands the production possibilities frontier which would in turn produce more capabilities for us to manufacture both food and clothes based on our example All right so meaning the more gross domestic product increases the more that we are more productive in our country and the more we are becoming productive the more that there is an ability to earn an income and ability to increase wealth which would in turn uh, reduce the instance of poverty and increase the standard of living and so that's the reason why it is highly encouraged for you who are listening to this particular discussion that even if you are still studying i am encouraging you to be part of the workforce you find some work why because when you are just uh, sitting in there and waiting for your parents or somebody your guardians or sponsors to give you some form of monetary consideration because in the guise of you studying well in effect in the economic standpoint you are such a palamunin in the economy no sakit but that's the reality the economy actually looks at everyone as a potential source of productivity but many of us in the philippines to be exact are actually not working or 
don't have any source of living in one household there are only probably around one person or probably two person who are working the rest are are uh, you know palamunin now don't get me wrong about that because probably uh, you might you will find it harder to work and study at the same time yes that is correct but if you notice uh, in developed countries such as those in European uh, region, in Japan, Korea, and in, in the United States, even if they are students, they are actually working because they are feeding themselves. They are uh, independent of, that, of, the, of their parents. And so that's the reason why these particular countries actually develop so much because of this particular culture but of course here in our country we have a problem with that because when we are still studying you know we're taking college for that matter and uh, while we are doing that we don't work in effect we are wasting our time because when you're when, you, when you're in college you are not actually a full-time student there are probably around seven six to seven hours or probably at some point eight hours within a day that you can actually work you know work for fast food companies so on and so forth because the more we produce something the more we work the more that we are helping the country to become more progressive the more that we sit on our on our couch and uh, watch tv the more that we are spiraling down into disaster and increasing the instance of poverty all right so next is supply and demand by the way uh the next uh professor will be discussing this one in in depth probably but uh we'll just give you a i will just give you a background on what the supply and demand is now there is a supply and demand in a particular market and a market is uh, any mechanism that brings buyers and sellers together in exchange of goods and services or money now take into consideration that market in this case is defined in the term in the in the bounds of economics all right it is not the market that is defined in the bounds of marketing because when you speak of market in marketing market is actually people right of which are potential actual and uh, returning right consumers and customers these are this is market in the context of uh, business management but <clears throat> market in the context of economics is the actual market wherein buyers and sellers actually meet together in exchange of goods and services or money buyers demands goods and sellers supply them now the theory of demand can be defined as a desire willingness and ability of the consumers to obtain a good at, at a particular price in a specific period of time demand also represents the relationship between prices of a good or a service and quantity demanded for that particular good or service the law of demand states that when prices that prices vary inversely meaning in opposite direction with quantity when prices of goods increases the amount of demanded will fall or the quantity demand will fall and when the price of goods increases the amount of demand will increase demand schedule shows the various quantities of goods and services that consumers are willing and able to buy at each price now it simply means that when prices are up demand goes down so pasabot ang presyo mo taas mas gamay ang tao mo palit of course that's a, a reality why would i buy something that is too expensive right so law of demand says when prices goes up demands goes down when prices goes down demand goes up that's the reason why when the uh, when a store or, or when a when a shoe store 
opens in in somewhere in Lahug that sells very cheap shoes. There were actually quite a number of people who were there flocking in their store. And in turn, it turns out that they don't have a business permit. No? And they were selling uh, counterfeited uh, goods like Adidas no? or underarms no? or Ikin. Th those particular scenarios are actually representative of how demand actually works. That when the prices are low, demand goes high. That's the reason why cheap goods attract more customers, right? Low of demand. Now, this is the demand curve. Although it's not a curve, but it's called the demand curve, represented in the letter D. Now, if you notice, when price are high, that is represented by P1, D, the demand quality is low, meaning as the, as the arrow uh, distance away from zero, meaning the quantity is increasing. The same with price, as, uh, zero, as price uh, distances away from zero, there is increasing price, meaning P1D is actually expensive. And so that's the reason why the quantity is low. And when price is reduced, demand also increases, represented by Q2D. And when price decreases furthermore, represented by PD3, quantity also increases. So meaning that uh, the more prices, the more pricey the thing is, the lesser the quantity of such a particular product demanded by the customers or the buyers.